I now turn to Professor Mindy Fullerlove. Um, Professor Fullerlove is an urban psychiatrist and professor of urban policy and health at the New School in New York City. And I also have the great privilege of um, having Mindy as a mentor, as a colleague, as a comrade, um, as a friend. Um, it's so wonderful to be sharing this moment with you, Mindy. Thanks so much, Robert. I, I'm coming from the land of the Lenape, Lenape people, uh, the great nation state of New Jersey, as we also like to say. Um, the And it's, uh, I, I would like to make the connection to Arizona and the uh, placement of Japanese people in concentration camps. I'm a social psychiatrist and one of the foundation classics of my discipline is a book called The Governing of Men, which is about the incarceration of the Japanese Americans at post and concentration camp, a study led by Alexander Layton um, with the help of his then wife. Um, and one of the, the really key things in that study that, that emerges, it's really looking at tear people from their homes, strip them of everything they possess, put them in the desert, and, and what do they make of it and how? And I think that this leads directly to his theories about upheaval and the breaking of social bonds as really the fundamental crisis that undermines health of populations, which he then extended in his classic three volume Sterling County study, which is uh, the real foundation classic of social psychiatry. So it, it's such, a, such an important story in all of its dimensions in uh, we have so much still to learn from uh, that event. And um, I think that the really important point about the time frame, we can think of it as a single event framed by World War II, or we can think of it in this larger frame of settler colonialism because they were on native lands. Uh, but there's also a beautiful documentary about people who had been incarcerated returning to Poston and looking at the land. Um, so as sort of generations and generations that carry this story forward. And, and those of us who are not connected directly to the land or to the history of incarceration being affected by it because uh, there's so much to learn from it. And so it becomes part of our teachings. And I would like to say that uh, part of what Robert and I have had the extreme honor of working on together is a project called 400 Years of Inequality. So I'm African-American and for us, it was very important to lift up 1619 as the time when Africans landed at Jamestown. And to mark that anniversary in 2019. And our project wanted to do, I, I think uh, at the heart of it, wanted to call on people, everybody really in the world, but everybody certainly in the United States to say, how is this story in your story, in your place? And in order to really get past uh, what Karen was talking about of, of the sort of silos and divisions, one of the first things we did was make a timeline. And I asked students at the New School to work with me on this. Two classes of students helped to create a timeline by following four stories. Uh, we followed stories, the 400 years of Native Americans, of women, of working people and of African-Americans. And you can see the intertwining and you can also see the moments when all of these stories are coming together. So it becomes a, a way of thinking, not in our silos, but in our complexity and, and the ways in which these stories of rupture and attachment and rupture and attachment and rupture of attachment, what I like to call serial force displacement, become a highlight of the American experience ripping people from land that they love. I came to this term really through writings of people who studied native history and who documented the ways in which native people were pushed off the land, not once, but repeatedly. And, what, and, and have documented, what does that do to people? You make a home and then it's taken from you and you're not put in a better place, you're put in a worse place. This is echoed in the experience of African-Americans who have experienced repeated displacement. And so this issue of, of serial force displacement, what, what does it do? What does it do to a nation that you push people around all the time? 
we get to deindustrialization in the 1970s and all the people who were the industrial workers are pushed out of the towns that become the Rust Belt and they go to the Southwest. What, what does this do? And so this idea that, that we become place-based, that we say, okay, what is the story of this place? What are the layers of this history that I can find here, that we can find here and that we can tell? I, I work with a Free People's University called the University of Orange. And we were recently uh, responding to an RFP about monuments, a lot, a lot of interest in monuments. And, and happily, the RFP said a monument didn't just have to be a statue. It could be a story. And so we talked about the ways in which um, we tell stories in Orange, New Jersey, which is my hometown. Uh, my father, who was an organizer here in the 50s and 60s, wrote a book about his experience. And his book is called Homeboy Came to Orange, A Story of People's Power. And so we called our project, our the monument we wanted to build, um, Homeboy Came to Orange, and so did we. And as a call for everybody's stories, because so many different people have arrived in Orange. Um, most of us arrived because it had affordable housing. But it's this, you know, quite remarkable little city, as all cities are remarkable, and as all cities have these histories of rupture and attachment, rupture and attachment, that we, that we need to know so that we can have a holistic view of how do we heal ourselves, how do we heal the land, and how do we stop the sixth extinction, seventh extinction, how do, how do, we, how do we create a livable future? And so the, the, the stories, the, 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 um, the connections are, are many, they are of many kinds. And when we search in our places, we find that we are indeed connected to the whole world, that, that we are the world in every little place. And, and we think at 400 Years of Inequality at, at our project, that watching what unfolded in the 150 places that participated affirmed for us the, the beauty of this possibility for healing people's souls, lifting up a vision of the future that was livable and fun. And I've also had the pleasure of writing a couple papers with Robert Simber that you can find. And the latest one is called What We Cannot Not Know. We, we cannot not know this history. And so that's the work ahead of us. Thank you so much.